Hello again everybody. In this video we're going to take a look at a couple of files that are absolutely essential to the running of the Oracle database. And one is called the init.or file and the other one is called the system parameter file that most Oracle DBAs abbreviate as the SP file. One of the really amazing things about the Oracle database is its ability to be tailored to just about any type of environment that's out there. Uh, some environments need a very transactional type database. Other environments need a very analytical processing, business intelligence type database. And one of the really amazing things about the Oracle database is that it was set up so that you can alter just about any type of behavior for the Oracle database to modify it so that it's optimized for your type of environment. And these are the two files that Oracle uses to uh, tailor itself so that uh, you can get the most out of the Oracle database. System parameter file is a binary representation of the init.ora. So it's a binary version of init.ora. And there's a couple of real nice reasons why this file exists. One of the reasons is you know to stop people from screwing around with values inside your database. Um, this, like I said, is a binary representation, so it makes it a heck of a lot harder for people to go in there and uh, change values around. So if you want to try to lock down your database as much as possible and stop people from uh, potentially getting in there and changing your database parameters around, you can use this binary file. But another one of the really nice features is that you can make changes to your database on the fly. Not all of the parameters that you can specify in the init.ora or the SP file can be changed uh, on the fly. Sometimes you'll actually have to shut down your database, start it back up again. This is commonly referred to as bouncing your database. Sometimes you'll have to bounce your database. Um, but for a lot of the parameters, you can actually change them on the fly. And one of the challenges that uh, DBAs have had in the past is, OK, if I make a change in my init.ora and I want that change to be uh, reflected in my database. I have to bounce the database. Uh, using the SP file allows me to make changes on the fly where I don't have to do that. But a second change is, okay, if I do make a change to my database on the fly and I forget to go back into my init.ora, the next time I bounce my database, I lose all those changes. By having this binary representation of um, all of the parameters that are out there, I can actually make changes on the fly, make changes in the binary file simultaneously so that the next time I do have to bounce my database, I don't lose any of those changes that I've made. So uh, this is a real nice feature of the Oracle database, and it gives you a lot of flexibility uh, in terms of being an administrator for your database. So let's take a look now and see what uh, those files look like. If I go into my file manager here. I use this tool called Explorer 2 and there's a, a free version and a licensed version of it and it's just a way of, uh, uh, of uh, replacing the Windows Explorer tool that comes along with Windows. If I go into this directory here, uh, you can see my Oracle Home is set up as the Oracle database. So uh, from my Oracle Home, I have a, a product, an 11.2, a DB Home 1, and then a database directory. If I go back here, uh, you can see this is my actual Oracle Home here. And as I installed the 11.2 software, all of these different directories were created for me automatically. So wherever your Oracle Home is, and this can be on Windows or Linux, if or Unix, you can go into a product and then 11.2, DB Home 1, and you can see here's all of the standard directories that are out there that go along with your uh, installation. And under the database directory, you can see I have all of these different files, and one of them is called SP File Sandbox, and in this case, Sandbox happens to be the name of uh, my instance. So SP File Sandbox, if I use the database configuration assistant to create my database, this file will be created for you automatically. When Oracle starts up, or when it's triggered to start up, it goes into this directory. It looks for an SP file that's named SP file um, sidname.ora. If it can't find that, then it looks for a file called init, and again, sidname, so it would be init sandbox.ora. Looks to find that file. Can't find that file, then it gives us an error message saying, I can't find the initialization file for you to start up this particular database. 
So we said before that this SP file is a binary representation of all of those different parameters that we can use to start up the database. We can edit this file. Uh, it's obviously not a good idea to do that, but we can take a look and, and see this file. I have this tool called Notepad++, and I'm going to go in there and I'm going to open up uh, that file. I might have it here in my recently used files. Nope, doesn't look like it, so I'm going to have to go in and I'm going to have to go into my D drive where my Oracle software is installed. There's Oracle, there's database, so that's my Oracle home. So from there we have to go to product 11.2, DB home 1, database, and we'll pull up that SP file. And again, it's not a good idea to edit this file. You can see there's all of these binary characters in here. Uh, Notepad++ doesn't know how to represent this stuff, so you got a bunch of weird stuff. If you were to go in and modify this file, uh, you would probably, you know, screw it up so that the next time the Oracle database started, it wouldn't be able to start, and you'd really be in a lot of trouble. So it's not a good idea to edit this file, but you can look at it and you can see some of the values. You can see stuff like DB block size equals 8K, uh, you know, log archive format, memory target. You can see what some of the parameters look like, but again, this is not a good idea to go in this file and uh, edit it. So if we don't want to touch this file, I'm going to go in and close this guy out. If we don't want to touch that file, but we do want to make changes to our uh, database, what do we do? Well, we want to edit the init.ora file, but as you can see, there is no init.ora file in this directory, so I don't have anything to edit. Well, Oracle has this command, and I'm going to hop into SQL Plus now, uh, SQL Developer, excuse me. Oracle has this command that allows me to go out there and create a, a, a parameter file, an init.ora file, from my system parameter file. I can do this in either direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say create p file from sp file. And I can do, like I said, I can reverse those. If I had an init.ora file and I wanted to create this binary representation, I could just say create sp file from p file. If it's not in the standard directory, I can say uh, create p file equal to and then where wherever the uh, init.ora file is, uh, or I want it to be from sp file. And again, I can specify exactly where I, w I want this file to be. But if I have the standard directories, and again, the standard directory is going to be Oracle Home, Product 11.2, DB Home, Database. If, if I have my files in my standard directories, Oracle will know how to resolve all of these different things for me and create uh, a file. So if I execute this command, and now I should get output that says p file from created. All right, so I go back into my directory here, and there's my original sp file. But now I have this new guy called init sandbox.ora. So again, the order that Oracle will go through is it tries to start up my database. It'll look for the sp file, the binary file first. If it can't find that, then it looks for the init.ora file can't find that, then it errors out. But this guy is meant to be edited. So now I can double click on him, and I can edit this guy in Notepad. I think. Oops, what happened there? It doesn't look like it started up. Let me double click on him again. Doesn't want to bring him up in Notepad, so I'll just do it manually. And you can see here's a lot of the representations of what we we're looking at before. And this file, like I said, is truly meant to be edited. So here's my DB block size equals 8K, diagnostic, open cursors 800, process is 750. Let's hop into SQL Developer now. And now I can do some really interesting things. If I want to see all the different parameters that have been set for me, I can look in this view, and the only way you can see the view is if you have privileges to see the view, uh, one called vdollar parameter. So if I do a describe on vdollar parameter, execute that guy. It'll bring back vdollar parameter. And notice there's not an S, it's not vdollar parameters, it's vdollar parameter. And I can see the name. The value, is it the default value? Can I modify it at the session level? Can I modify it at the system level? Has it been modified? Has it been adjusted? Is it a deprecated function? I have all of those things that are available to me now. So let's just take a quick query off this guy and say, let's say select name value from V$ parameter. And again, not an S. And let's order this guy by name. Actually, I'm going to add another. Pr I'm going to add another column here called "Is System Modifiable," and I'm going to execute that guy. And I forgot the by here, so I want to say order by name. So execute that guy again. 
and you can see that I have all of the different parameters here. Here's the actual name. Here's the value inside my database right now. I'm going to shrink this column down. And is it system modifiable or not? So if I scroll all the way to the end of this, you can see that in the, the 11 G version, release 2 of the Oracle database, there's 341 different parameters that are out there. Uh, there's plenty of pages on Google to go out there and see what each one of these values mean and how it affects your database. I'm not going to go into that in this video. Uh, I'm already going a little longer than I'd wanted to. But you can see here are all the different values that are available to me. If I want to change one of these values, I can change it in one of three ways. I can change it in the system parameter file if I want to. I can change it in memory, so as my, my database is actually running, or I can change it in both. So anything that has the ability uh, to be changed at the system level uh, will have a value of immediate here in is system modifiable. So I can actually go in here and change any of these values that say immediate. So let's say, let's take a look at something like, uh, what's a good value here for me to pick? Uh, job queue processes. There's a real good, there's a real good one that I can change, and it won't really have too much of an effect on my my system. So if I want to just change it in memory, don't want to change it uh, in my SP file. So I maybe want to do something uh, short term here. I can say alter system. If I can spell it right. Set job queue processes equal to some other value that, that it doesn't have now. I'm just going to change it up by 1, 996. And then I can specify the scope. I can say scope equals memory, which means just change it in memory for now, but when I reboot my database, when I bounce it, I won't have this value here anymore. I can say SP file, which means change it in the binary representation of my init.ora file, but don't change it in memory. Or I can do it in both. So I'm going to specify I want to do it in both now. Whoops, I want to execute that. And I didn't spell it right either. Job queue processes. So again, why does it keep doing that? I don't want it to execute everything there. I just want it to execute. Oh, because I didn't put a semicolon. Semicolon separate the two commands. Go back to this one. I just want to execute that command. So I alter the system. You can see system set altered. So I've modified them both in my binary file and inside my uh, memory. So right now in memory, if I execute this command again, and I'll pull back everything if I go to job queue processes. Oh, a little too far. Let's go back here. Come on. And you can see job queue process is now set to 996. Now, if I have something here that's false, it means that I cannot change it in memory. So let's say I wanted to change this Java soft spe session, session, session space limit. Easy for me to say. So let's change this from Java soft session space limit. And I'll just give it some weird value of 1. And I say I want to change that in memory. Execute the command. Cannot modify, right? I cannot specify the initialization parameter. Cannot be modified. So that gives me an indication of the what I tried to pull back here. Uh, it cannot be modified at the, at the session level. But I can always change it at the file level. If I had changed this to SP file and executed that, it would actually go out there and write to my binary representation, my SP file. I bounce the database. It's ready to go again. So the init.ora and the system parameter file, a couple of files that are absolutely essential to understanding how your database is set up, how it works, and it gives you a lot of flexibility as to how you can tailor your database. And as a DBA, it's one of those things that you're going to have an intimate knowledge of.